Do you see it, Abdullah? So when you say, may Allah forgive you, you are a stupid idiot and you are not a Muslim. Are you there, Abdullah? Do you see it, Abdullah? It is not fitting for the Prophet and those who believe that they should pray for forgiveness of the for the pagans. So according to you, we are pagan. By the way, translate here is Mushrikeen. Mushrikeen is not the word pagan, literally, you know. But here we go. This is your book. Did you watch video? I don't know who is this person about millions of Muslims converting. I have no idea. For me, you know, by the way, even if millions of Muslims convert to Christianity every day, we will not stop doing what we are doing because the purpose is education. Education means we are fighting ignorance. Ignorance is our enemy. So God, he can make, he can open eyes for people as he wish, right? But we have a duty as a Christians to fight ignorance, not only ignorance of the Muslims, but ignorance of the Christians. Like this guy now, he do not know. He just told me, may Allah forgive you. But as you see, the Quran forbid him from doing that. He is ignorant. So we are here to fight ignorance. And that's why the Muslims don't dare to debate me, by the way, because they don't know what I will say next. You see, you can predict what any Christian, other Christian, he will say to you in a debate. Because you know that his knowledge is the same you heard many times. But you talk to me, just give me a reason to mention something in you. I will, I will get you busted. It will take me a second. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you see, but loving the enemy, some Christians, by the way, they, they understand loving the enemy wrongly. Uh, I told you before, you know, like we used to go hiking. Uh, a Christian, they think, uh, because Jesus taught us to be loving, that's mean we cannot uh, have guns, we cannot have swords, you know. They have a very weird understanding of the verses of the Bible. So, uh, you know, when we used to go hiking, all those Christians, I go with them, they look at me really bad. I mean, I'm, I'm the bad boy between them. I mean, why is, why have a gun with him? What's wrong with this guy, you know? This is how the Christian look at you. What's wrong with him? You know, like he's stuck. Like, <laughs> like it's like he's weird he's not acting like a Christian you know and then one day when we are in the mountains and it was a very stormy ugly night uh, the wolves they start howling and coming from every direction suddenly all of them they said your gun is with you right you have your gun with you right I said yeah I have my gun with me but I have only one bullet they said what you carry a gun with one bullet so those who be making fun of me for all this time for carrying a gun suddenly they are crying for the gun and they even hold me i can't even if i want to shoot i can't shoot everybody's holding me standing next to me i said give me a space at least if a, if a wolf attack us i can shoot this is my pain with the christians christian they understand things wrongly jesus said the one who don't have a sword go and buy one but nobody want to read this verse they only read for you that jesus says if somebody hit you in your cheek give him the other cheek but Jesus did not say that people can kill you. He did not say, Jesus said, don't resist evil by evil. Which means, you can resist, but not by evil. So if somebody rape, you don't rape his wife. That is evil. Jesus said, the one who lived by the sword, he shall, be, he shall die by the sword. Which means the one who killed will be killed. That is justice. And this is the same order in the Old Testament. This is the same God. Me, myself, I will not even consider a man a man if he never have an army training. I will never even consider a man to be a man if he never train himself to shoot and to defend his family. And this is me. And the Bible confirmed that. The Israelis, they went to war. Jesus, he have disciples, they have swords with him. Is it Peter who have a sword? 
Like all this time, Jesus is the one who ordered them to buy sword. He said, the one who don't have sword, go and buy one. They said, we have two. He said, this is enough. So they make fun of you about having a gun and tell that they, they need the gun and then they cry for it. You know, it's not guns who kill people. It is what people do with guns. Right? Otherwise, a criminal, he can kill by anything. He can kill by car. He can kill by a rock. He can kill by his bare hands. He can kill by a kitchen knife. You, you know, if a human want to wanna be a beast, he can kill. Especially if you take advantage of the weak one. Or take advantage of somebody is not aware, like stabbing him from behind or hitting him by a rock or something. So it's not weapon. It is the evil inside you is dangerous. Uh, ask yourself, if Israel have zero weapon, Aren't they going to do to Israel and the people of Israel what they did today to this guy from Sri Lanka? Just ask yourself. If Israeli army is not extremely powerful, what the terrorist will do to the Jews in Israel? I think all of you, you know the answer. So Christianity does not teach you to be stupid and silly. Love does not mean you don't arm yourself, you don't have army, you don't defend your house and land and family. Love means to share the truth with them, whatever the truth will cost. Even if it's going to cost war. And if war happened, you stand and you fight. A dead hero, is better than a living coward. Way better. Imagine you have a husband, and then there's a, you know uh, somebody coming to rape you, and then the husband he hide, he go under the sink of the kitchen. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Hariz Akmal saying, so you call yourself a man? You are talking to me, Hariz? I don't know. You can call me whatever you want, but I don't think your prophet was a man. According to the Hadith, your prophet, he never been able to give his wife orgasm. If you don't believe me, I can show you. Here we go. What kind of man... Even even in even in bed he is not a man. I mean what what's wrong with this guy? When Ummu Salama, obviously she is a whore, she came to Muhammad, she told him she was seeing a very wet dream. Do you know how wet it is there, you know? Come on. I mean she lives in the Amazon jingles. It's very wet there, especially down there under the skirt. So she had the Amazon rain and it was very wet there. Very wet there, you know. Uh, so she was asking the prophet if she can wash her private part which is really wet there if you know what I'm saying brother then the wife of the prophet she said like what the heck women they have this charge do you see it this is the wife of your prophet her husband Mr. Muhammad Abdul he never made her have this charge. She was only charging. She never discharged. Are you there, Mr. Are you a man? And look, the other woman, she don't have a man, but she have a lot of wet rain. Look, this woman, she don't have a man. She is just, you know, doing things you know you know what I'm saying you know the one who don't have a man she was able to have this charge and to have orgasm the one she have the most powerful prophet 
She never heard of this charge. She have no idea. Like what? Women, they have this charge. Imagine your wife, she do that to you in front of your friends. You know, she said that women, they have, they have orgasm. Hey, everybody will look at you like, what the heck? What this guy you do in the bedroom then? What the prophet was using in the bedroom? He was watching TV? Are you there? Now you tell me about the man, if you want. Feel free. Any Muslim? Any Muhammadan? Sahaba I said, ask to curse the, the okay, hold on. Hey, Abdullah, again, you are making poo, poo Guys, the Sahaba, they asked the Prophet to curse a person. He says, I am not sent to be cursed, uh, but I sent to be mercy. Are you sure, Abdullah? Abdullah, I want to ask you, did your parents get your seed from Walmart? Because I'm trying to grow some Abdullah like you in my backyard. Because your prophet, he was cursing even Muslims. And you are a certified idiot. Read carefully. Your prophet used to beat people, beat Muslims. He beat them, he beat them. He do what? He beat them. He beat them up. And he cursed them. And actually, it doesn't even say curse in Arabic. It says more. It says, Shatam tuhu wa la antahu, which means I say the F word to his parents, filthy language, and I curse. Not only curse. And then he says, I ask Allah to make my curse is mercy on them. <laughs> you see how, how funny your, your prophet curse work? It's like a gas, you know, he, he beat you, it, it turned to be gas. <laughs> By the way, why the prophet was cursing and beating Muslims? Does it say and beat him? I cursed or I beat or I say the F word? Are you there, Abdullah? Abdullah, the more you talk, the more you make boo boom. Go debate openly, brother. Don't hide behind YouTube, I, I, I come out. You see, behind YouTube, my friend, I can go all the way to Indonesia. More than 200 million Indonesian, they are watching my videos. The best place ever. I like YouTube, what's your business? Aren't you in YouTube too, brother? Why are you are in YouTube, potato? Would you share a bed with Donald Trump? Well, I think this is a dream of yours. This is why you think about it a lot. Because I'm not sure why each time you come here, you say the same thing. Ah, you remind me of Sheikh Uthman when he saw David Wood. He says, MashaAllah, you are six foot tall, huh? Ah, you like tall guys. <laughs> this guy, each time he come here, he say the same. Obviously, he's perverted. This is what the Muslims have. Look at the answers. Look at the stupidity. Look at the trash language. Who is going to debate us about his God, his religion? Did you share the bed with Donald Trump? What kind of camel urine you drank today, Omar Abdul? Did you get this question after thinking so deep or so shallow? 
Were you inspired by Allah or by Muhammad or by both brother? Potato. Just wait in the coming election. Donald Trump is coming, and you Muslims will go crazy again. Believe it or not, Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia they want Donald Trump to stay as a president. Do you believe that? They don't want Joe Biden because Joe Biden he's under the influence of Obama and Obama is a Shia and he hates Muslim Sunni. And this is why Obama now trying to lift up the sanctions on Iran. Well, all of us we knew that, you know. Obama he gave Iran a lot of opportunity when he was a president. He was all the way their helper because the dream of Obama that Iran will take over Saudi Arabia. You know, Obama, he wanted really to establish an Islamic caliphate starting with the Sunni and to be in the hand of the Shia. The Muslim Brotherhood are one of the organizations sponsored by the Shia. Actually, the first center of Muslim Brotherhood was bought by the Shia Imams. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? Anyone? And you know, the funny is, Muslims, they don't seek protection from Allah. They seek it from France. Like now they are buying weapons from France like crazy. Weapons from America like crazy. Uh, thousands of soldiers, Marine soldiers are all over the Middle East, invited by the Muslims. Well, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Emirat, Bahrain, you name it. Why the Muslims don't trust Allah on their protection. Uh, today, the I think Imara, they signed a deal, let us see. I don't know how many billion dollar, I think maybe 18, something like that, scary number. Let us see. News. And today, the the uh, the foreign minister of Russia is coming because they want to buy from them a lot of uh, okay, nineteen billion dollar deal. What they bought junk, because those Rafale airplane, any airplane, anyway, any weapon you buy, those weapon they will help you for four years, five years. After that, they are old and they are outdated. Nineteen billion dollar of junk literally why because they are desperately trying to find protection after kissing the asses of the french people all the money you make it goes in a blink of an eye this is why you know once one of you he asked me he said he's, he's uh, his, he think about investing, he want to buy a property or something like that in Emirat. I said, do you want my advice? Never buy there because those countries are cartoonic countries. Those are not really countries. Those are made by the Western regimes, by the Western even intelligence department, not even government. If you remember a few years ago, when things went in trouble and almost there's a war between Iran and Saudi Arabia, Emirat became empty, totally empty. There's tens of thousands of cars in the airport of Dubai. People just leaving, leaving their cars for free in the street. Just take it. You can search it in Google. And this is what can happen to this country in one day. If Iran shoot one missile at Emirat, 
95% of the population, they are foreigners, they will flee. And this country will become a ghost town. This is the truth. Just open debate uh, openly, brother. First, I'm not your brother. You're a black stone kisser, you're a pagan. Secondly, this is how I debate. You like it, you don't like it, get lost. Stop crying like a rabbit, like a dog. I don't, this is openly, here we are in, in, in the internet. This is the most open space ever, internet. We speak to people around the world. And you are crying like a puppy because none of your scholars dare to debate me. What difference is going to make if I go next to you or oh, we are talking here? Potato. So never, never buy or invest in those countries for those are not countries. Actually, I believe that those countries will disappear in less than a hundred years from now. Turkey will disappear. Qatar will disappear. Bahrain will disappear. Emirates will disappear. Saudi Arabia will be divided. You know, people do not know the tribal problem inside, inside Saudi Arabia. They don't know what is happening. It's one family controlling other tribes. So sooner or later, when time comes, you see, always having uh, things have to have, uh, let us say, a suitable reasoning for things to conquer. So those countries are made by the British intelligence when they wanted to destroy uh, the, the Ottoman Empire. They are the one who created them. And the one who created them can destroy them too. So never invest in those countries. If now, you never know, maybe maybe, maybe next week a war will, will erupt in between Iran and the, and the Muslim Sunni. And Iran will take over Emirat in, in, in a few hours, not even, in, maybe one hour. They are so close to Emirat. Maybe many of you do not know how close Emirat is to Iran. It's so close. And even Americans cannot protect them. Why? Because simply they are so close. The only reason for Americans to, to protect them, if the American will take over the country forever, like what, what happened to Kuwait. Now Kuwait, now they have a prince. Supposedly he is the ruler of the country. But the fact that the, the real ruler is the American. Let me show you. I will open Google, peace be upon him. Do you see how, how close it is? Look. This is Imarat. And this is Iran. Do you have an idea? extremely close Bahrain more than 70 to 80 percent of it is Iranian Shia Qatar is no different they can take it so easy so those countries are in extreme dangerous place for investment or to have a this is can be temporary. Like if you want to have a business there, it have to be a, like a business you can fly in a, over one day. Like it's something it's a, based on the internet, let's say. But buying property, etc., this is extremely stupid decision because you never know when the disaster will hit. Do we have any Mohammedan? And you know now. The, the Muslim Sunni, their biggest concern is Iran because uh, the Shia is spreading between Muslim Sunni like fire. And this is the concern of Saudi Arabia. Iran became so powerful. So let us make it simple. The Arab, they fear again the history of the Persian. The Persian is coming back. But this time they are more occupied by Islam, which means they can invade and claim to be Muslims. So the Muslim Sunni, they cannot say those are kuffar. Yet yeah, they are saying kuffar already. They are accusing the Shia to be kuffar. But look what the Shia, they are preparing for them. They have an army in Lebanon, Hezbollah, here. 
they have all of Iran actually, all of Iraq, sorry. All this area, do you believe it or not, is Hezbollah, all of Iraq. All of this, all the way inside the borders of Syria. This is the Shia. More than 90% of Iraq is Shia. And most of them, they, are, they worship Iran. In Syria itself, a huge part of it is controlled by the Shia. Literally, by Hezbollah. Hezbollah of Iran. Then you go to Yemen. Yemen, the capital, and most, maybe 85% of the country already, is controlled by the Shia. So if you look at the map, the Shia is surrounding the Muslim Sunni from every direction. This is the Shia Iran. Connected to Iraq, connected to Syria, connected to Lebanon. And here there is the Shia of Yemen. And not to forget to mention that Oman is very close to the Shia too. They don't take a side, but eh, mostly they will side with Iran. So those little tiny countries, even Saudi Arabia, it's a, it's a big by size, but it's a small by population. They are no match to fight the Persian. No match. The Persian will eat them alive. And if the Muslim, they think that Turkey can help them, the Turkish, they are for sale. Whoever pay more, they go for it. Erdogan, yesterday, he was the enemy of Emirat. Today, he is meeting with the Emirati president because he is desperate for money. The Turkish lira is under the ground and the country is collapsing. Anyway, do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? Uh, Mr. Ricky, I don't want Christians to call to discuss the Bible here because that will give the Muslims an opportunity to take a break from me exposing their garbage profit. There's many other channels that discuss the Bible. You can go and join them. Right? I mean, I'm not the only one here can. And even maybe they can do way better than me. But when it's come to Islam, none of them can do better than me. All right. Otherwise, there's many channels they can really help you about the Bible. You know, when uh, when Imara they sign a peace a peace agreement with Israel, do you know why they signed the agreement? I mean, since when those Arabs they are so in love with the Jews? But because they are they are so desperate for security, they need the help of Israel. Iran will eat them alive. Saudi buying from them weapon. I mean, all of them they are under uh, all of them they are under now the protection of Israel. All of them they depend that if Iran attack them, Israel will protect them. Uh, How to call this CP? How to call this CP? Huh? Hmm. Well, those countries are not countries. Anyone can, can beat them easy. I mean, the Saudi army, look, the Saudi army is fighting the Shia in, in, in Yemen for the last four years. All the army of Saudi Arabia and the army of Emirat, and even they brought fighting, fighters from Sudan. They brought fighters from many Islamic countries, paid them a lot of money, and still they are not able to defeat the Shia, not even one meter back. And now the Shia, they are almost taking the city of Ma'rib, Ma'rib, sorry. So this is their territory. This is Sana'a, this is the Yemen, and it is under the control of the Shia, the capital under the control of Shia. Four years of war, 
army of Saudi Arabia, all the weapons they received from USA, still they cannot defeat the Shia in Yemen. For a very simple reason. Those Shia, you kill one of them, the women, they make 10 babies in the same day. <laughs> Please do a study of uh, 4171, how Jesus is three in one. Well, we mentioned that many times already. Uh, you know, for us, we don't believe in what the Quran say, but we use the Quran to show the Muslims that they are hypocrite. Because if Jesus can be three and one in the same time in the Quran, can God be? I mean, he's God. You know, you see, Muslims, when the idea of God is very corrupt idea, when they want God can do anyone, whatever you want. The second you say Christianity, they say, no, he cannot. Can God be? Uh, okay, if, if the God of the Muslim says he is seven gods, any Muslim dare to question? No. Uh, you know, uh, somebody's talking about God fighting with the human. You see, when a, if a Muslim he like did that, he was making fun of that, you know, because he is donkey. What happened, you know, what happened always, uh, Muslim they take advantage of those who do not know Islam. And that's why I'm here to train you. I'm not going to live for long. I mean, uh, all of us will die, right? But my duty here is to teach you how to get them busted. So one day that was making fun about Israel or Jacob was uh, uh, wrestling with God, right? Uh, you do not need to debate him about it. Say to him, you're stupid. So why are your Quran, if you don't like the story, if you don't accept the story, why are your stupid Quran called Jacob Israel? Because this is what Israel means. So the second, the Quran accept the name, that means the Quran accept the story. But those donkeys they do not know their religion. However, those donkeys they flourish only if they are arguing with other donkey, which means they are ignorant who do not know. He he is not qualified to debate. You know what I mean? And Muslims they choose carefully the one they will debate. That's why they stay away from me. You mention another name, they line up to debate the person. Like say apostate prophet, right away they want to debate apostate prophet. Say Christian prince, we debate him only face to face. Right? The second they see that their opponent is not a person who can make victory, even if it's going to be, let us say, uh, he will not make victory and they will not make victory, they will do it. But if they knew that the one they will argue with is going to wet the floor with them, they put all the conditions in the world to make it not to happen. Otherwise, ask yourself why why all of them they are lucky. I mean, they got Muslim to debate them. Nobody want to get close to me. How I can defeat my Muslim friend with debate? Learn education. Education is the is the way to defeat ignorance. We don't want you to defeat your Muslim friend. We want you to de defeat his ignorance. So, you know, we are you know for we are not against the Muslims. We are against the ignorance. Enemy or enemy is ignorance. Muslims are poor people. They've been fooled. If they see the truth, they will leave it. All right, do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> yeah, the ambush, uh, the ambush uh, uh, apostate prophet. Uh, when the last time you will ambush me? The coward, he says he would debate Christian Prince. I called him, he hang up on me. He did not let me ask any question. He did not even let me answer. You have 30 seconds, uh, okay, hang up on him. Hey, Abdullah, I'm not going to read your comment. You're just, a, just an idiot. Do we have any Muslim want to say something to us? Who is a Muslim would like to call me? Who is a Muslim? 
like to call me. What do you think about Zachariah Botres? He's a wonderful man. I respect him a lot. This is how all priests they should be. This is how all priests should be. Anyone, you see, this is how you know who is a true priest and who is not. The one who is hypocrite, the one who doesn't say things as it is, he is no Christian, as simple as that. Um... So, any Abdul? Let us look at Skype to see. I didn't see any text, anything. Man, Skype today is dead. Oh boy, what happened? Not even nothing. Potato, 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 Okay, well, what we can do? It is what it is. Give them the trinity of contradictions. I'm not sure what does that mean. Any Muslim? How many times today I said any Muslim? And yet not even one. Thank you, Ariane. I'm trying to read the, the chat. I mean, too many of you, it's hard to follow up. And as you know, I am an Arab and we are very, very slow. There's a guy who took a picture of a hole in the front of his house when he was six years old. Then he took a picture when he is 35 years old. The same hole is still there. Why? Because each time they called the city, they said to him, Inshallah, we will fix it tomorrow. And the hole is still there. And the guy, maybe in 20 years from now, he will take another picture, he is 65. And he will take a picture next to the hole. And the hole is still there. Because each time he called, he said to him, we will fix it, inshallah. Everything there is inshallah. And Allah never show up. Mm -hmm. Just wait for Allah to fix it. Do we have any Abdul? Uh, let me guess. We will call you Christian Prince, inshallah. Hmm. That is something. You will be happy with Jesus and Muhammad in Jannah? Okay, well, I don't know. If I am you, I will not be very happy too much to be with Muhammad because he might sleep with you. This guy is weird. Didn't you hear that he said that in the heaven there is images of boys and men and women? And if you like an image, you will be you will, you will go inside the image? What if Allah made you one of those images? Just think about it. Oh, by the way, if you go to heaven, don't forget to take a picture of your penis, as your prophet said, it's going to be endless. Do you think your phone will be capable to take a picture of English penis, brother? I mean, I don't know how you can't capture that penis. But maybe, I mean, you never know until that time, they might find a way. Like time travel camera go with English penis. 
So Abdullah will be in heaven, and to, uh, you know, and then we will see we Christian we will be in hell supposedly, and then we will see the penis of Abdullah like zzz, going, and we look. I say it's Abdullah penis. Your name will be written on it, by the way. Hey Abdullah, if you don't mind, please, when you go to heaven, so just we can recognize your penis from other penises. Don't forget, like, put a number and give us a sign, you know, just you know anything. Because how will we remember, how will we know which one is you? Right? Obviously, Islam is from God. What is your thought about Sister Maggie Kuzam? I don't know who is this Maggie Kuzam. Do you believe that Katham companions really believed that he was a true prophet? <clears throat> you know, they are gang and they get the benefit of uh, a company, this man, the business to grow. And his, uh, you know, the believer, they are business, doing business, you know. I don't believe they are believers. Uh, let us see how we can read those comments. Brother, can you someday take a Christian callers? my friend i'm not here seeking fan with my respect to you uh, you know for me i have a family here i love you all but uh, i'm not really interested in the word fans you know i want you to be only a fan for the truth always side with the truth not with the person <clears throat> do you believe I answered you, Zachariah, already. I don't know. Maybe you don't hear me. Are you going to broadcast in quality, in quality of life in Christmas? Maybe we can make a day for the broadcast in there for Christmas time. Why not? Or maybe here. Why not? Yeah. What do you want me to do for Christmas? Come to you as Santa Claus? You know, uh, 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 I don't know if you saw those videos in uh, in YouTube. The Muslims each time in Christmas they warn Muslims not to celebrate Christmas, and in their TV they teach their the children. They say, "What about giving you a gift from Baba Muhammad? Baba Muhammad, hold on. Imagine your daughter. She is six years old, and she sit in the lap of Papa Muhammad. Uh huh." Papa Muhammad. Here we go. They found the solution for Papa Noel. Papa Muhammad. Are you going to let your child to sit in the lap of Papa Muhammad? Mm, that's a good thing. Have fun. I think it's going to work. Papa Muhammad. Yeah. And what Papa Muhammad will give the children's suicide belt? What exactly he will have there? A dagger? A stabber? Acid? To throw it at face of women as they do in Europe? Hmm. Papa Muhammad. Yeah. But you know, the good thing is, that all, almost all Islamic countries, especially in the Middle East, Arab countries, all of them they celebrate Christmas. You know, they try to oppose it, but I mean, Christmas go. This is why I encourage really people uh, that Christmas is something really powerful and it work gratefully to bring Christ to the life of Mohammedans. Uh, you know, Christ, our Lord is a Lord of joy. If you watch the, the intro here, we have when a Muslim he asks about if music is haram and art is haram so what is halal? I mean how we can have fun? Zakir Naik he said let us go in the video here here yeah this part watch and love without understand the brother asked a very important question that 
most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? See, listening to music is haram. Haram is forbidden. It's it's big sin. And uh, uh, watching movie is forbidden. Chess is forbidden. Art drawing is forbidden. So what we do in this life, and what is life for? What is exactly what we can do? You know. The answer. Listen again. Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. That's it. So, okay, well, so what is the fun? There's nothing left. You can't play chess. You can't draw. You can't sing. You can't play music. You cannot, uh, football is haram, by the way. Uh, basketball is haram. I mean, everything is haram. So what we will do? That's why you see that the Muslims they don't follow. I mean, all of them, they are hypocrites. All of them, they are hypocrites. They claim that they are Muslims. You ask them, he say, I'm a Muslim. But none of them follow the stupidity of Muhammad. There is a news about a man burned alive in group people in Pakistan. Yeah, we spoke, you know, we spoke about it already. I advise people never go to Islamic countries for any reason, tourism, work, anything. This is, this is, those lands are controlled by the devil. You go there, you are responsible for a stupid decision you made. Don't cry for it. Why an engineer from Sri Lanka will go to a stupid country like Pakistan? I prefer to stay in Sri Lanka and take $200 salary with my family and kids having a good time even if it's not too much money from living in such a filthy country. Why you want to do that? Never ever. You see, I'm born from the Middle East. I am born literally. Which means the blood I have is from there. I will never go there. why people don't use their brain the most corrupt the most evil the most cheaters the most liars the most people who speak about god but they do always the opposite is there why you want to go there daniel he is saying christian prince is a hypocrite and bigot ah okay well, Daniel, let us talk about hypocrite. Your prophet, he says, don't touch women when they have their period. But your prophet was having sex with them when they have their period. <laughs> Who is the hypocrite? Are you there, Daniel? And about bigot, let us see the bigot, the bully prophet. He was bullying even his uncle. He promised to kill all the Christians and the Jews, and he called them animals, pigs, filthy, nudges, you name it. Now you there, Daniel? Why you don't call me Daniel so we can laugh? You're upset? In Google, it says that Pakistan is number one country search for sex with donkeys. Daniel, I want you to be honest with me. Are you counted in that number? Or you were searching for something else? Daniel, is it true that number one country search for sex with donkey is Pakistan? Or I'm making things up? You can search it right now in Google. And by the way, I mean, you are beating everybody else. Nobody can. Number one. I mean, you must be proud. Good donkey. I mean, what about goat? What happened to the goat? You, you, you people lost your interest? What's wrong with goats? They have nice hair. I mean, donkey. I mean, what is exactly is tempting you?
There's debate going lately between Brother Wahid and Sister Maggie Hosea. Why they are debating? Aren't they both are those Christians? Secondly, who is this Maggie? Is she a scholar or she is a YouTuber? People are funny. Maggie Hosea. Don't give the bread to someone who not never been in the kitchen. He will burn it. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? I'm asking about your claim. The prophet is sleeping with women and her menses. Oh, this is very easy. He's asking his prophet to prove his claim. Okay, I will put your request here. This is your request, Mr. Daniel. I'm asking about the donkey. He's talking about Muhammad. I'm asking about your claim of the prophet sleeping with women in her menses. Do you like to call me, Daniel, to show to make you read it, or you want me to read it for you? First of all, this is the Quran. It says, chapter 2, verse 2, 2, 2. Look how many 2, my friend. You are a 2, 2. It says, concerning women and their courses, stay away from them. It's a hurt. Okay? Keep away from your women when they have a, a menstruation. Uh, don't approach them. Don't approach them. Let us go to the Hadith. And now you will see that your prophet is was a donkey. Hmm. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You're a prophet. He used to fund the Aisha. He ordered her to put an izar between her legs so the blood will not be all over him. When she have her menstruation, it says, you Shiruni, he F her. Are you there? Daniel? Are you? Now who is the donkey? Now he will play dead. Now he will say, I heard nothing, I saw nothing, I'm not even here. See, the Quran says, stay away from women, they have their period. Muhammad, he have 13 wives, yet the horny, he is doing it with the women, she have blood and she is bleeding. Are you there, Daniel? Never change Christian Prince because you will lose. You can move a little bit, Daniel. Come on, just say hello, just to be sure you're okay. Okay, Daniel, I think he his battery is 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 dead now so it's okay he will charge later i mean he will he will go home and he will charge it and then he will he will give us uh yep do we have any abdul no abdullah is not dead abdullah said you are lying I mean, Abdullah is the genius, by the way. It's in the front of him on the screen. He says, I'm lying. <laughs> That's a good one. 
and this is Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, which means both of them they are effect authentic. Look, it says Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari 300, Muslim 293. Hmm. A line, your line, the denial. The denial of the Abdul is a good sign. Yeah, we show it to them in the screen and you are lying. Okay. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. You remind me of your prophet when the guy, he keep asking him to give his brother honey and the brother is getting sick more and more. So the prophet said to him, the prophet, look at the word prophet. When the guy, he came more than once, twice, three times, and his, his, his brother is dying. So the prophet says to him, your brother's stomach is lying and Allah told the truth. What a doctor, man. Your stomach brother is lying? Hmm. Any Abdul? Okay, guys, let us be easier in the text and be nice. Don't use a very harsh language, you know. Just to focus on the topic, not in the person. All right. No, actually, the translation here says fundling is not correct because it says yubashir, yubashir. So he he do if her. Yubashir. Yubashir or rajul zawjatahu, he sleep with her. CP, let us hear some stories of how you become a Christian. How I become a Christian? Yeah. How I become a Christian? That's a good question. Yeah, you know, I don't really like to talk about myself. Uh, I never claim that I am like, uh, uh, I don't know, I mean, there's nothing to be proud about uh, as me, you know. Uh, maybe most of you are better Christian than me. I don't know. And I find that a person when he speak good about himself is not doing good. You know what I mean? So I I avoid speaking about myself um, because I don't find the reason for that. In the same time, the only good is God. You know. So why I want to talk about? me when I am not the good God. I'm not. Right? There are some people, they like to talk about themselves. Um, they like, you know, they, they like to be the topic, actually. For me, I don't like it, say, really, because who care? I mean, if I'm good or bad, who care? At the end of the day, it's the Lord who see what we hide, right? The Lord, he knew what you do and what you don't want to do. What people think about you is not really important. How many people they are in jail and they never commit a crime? Why? Because according to the court, they commit a crime. And like you hear from time to time, a guy, he just left jail after 38 years and they find out that he is not the one who killed that person. So uh, uh, there's no justice will come from a human being. And when I say no justice will come from a human being, which means nobody can be justice with you, regardless what you do. Nobody can appreciate what you do, except the Lord, because the only one who really know your heart is the Lord. So I advise people not to speak too much about themselves. Like people, they say to me, tell us your testimony. I love, you know, I don't like those things, really, testimony. 
Me, myself, I don't like it. Uh, for whatever I say to you, is meaningless to you unless you live it. It's like somebody says to you, uh, let us say a person who lost an arm, and he explained to you how hard it is to live without an arm. But it doesn't matter how much he explained to you, you do not know really what he's talking about because you have two arms. You will understand only when you have one. So nobody would understand except the person who lived the experience. Uh, you were a Muslim, I became a Christian. No, I never been a Muslim. I'm too smart to be a Muslim for a second. I believe it's an insult to be a Muslim for a second. Because how in the world I want to believe there's a God who will make my penis endless? That alone will make me leave this religion, even if it's true. I mean, is that a really a reward or a, or a punishment? Imagine your penis go in the jungle of Amazon. Do you know what kind of ants they have there? I mean, seriously, do you know the ants of the Amazon? What if your penis went to the Amazon jungle and it become under the attack of the ants there? Or you go in the river of Amazon and you have those fish, oh boy, and they will rip it apart. Oh no. Did you watch that movie? Oh man. You know? You see those little creatures, they may be little, but they are extremely dangerous. So imagine you have an endless penis. May Allah bless your penis, by the way, if you are a Muslim. And then, by mistake, I mean, an accident happened. Your penis hit one of their colony. Oh boy. Are you ready? Are you? Hmm. How stupid do you think is Quran? 1236 regard to what Muhammad could remember when he heard original story of a Christian. Uh, see, when, I want you not to do the same as the Muslims. The Muslim, they take one verse and they say, okay, this is, uh, you know, this is stupid. If you want to enjoy more stupidity of the Quran, you better read the whole story. You know what I mean? I try always uh, to read the whole story because the story will be really more more funny. Don't focus only in one verse. And I find very uh, uh, like there's a book it's called Asbab al Nuzul. Some chapters in the Quran they don't have explanation of them in that book because supposedly the book is um, about the reason for the verses to come. And uh, but if if the explanation is exist, then you will see what is behind the story and how really it's foolish and funny. But anyway, if you read that verse, you will understand nothing. It doesn't make any sense. Nothing there makes sense. And the Quran, as usual, mistakes after mistake after mistake. Do we have any Abdul have anything to say? Today it's very dry. Anyone? I will buy and read your translation for the Quran. Okay. Now I have a reason to translate. Before, I don't. Thank you for giving me a reason to translate.
there is no mistake in the Quran. Ah, it's deliberately deceptive. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. So, uh, why today is very slow? Where is the Muslims? What happened? There's like any, there's any special movie in TV? Well, if you read the whole chapter, then you will see, my friend Stephen, that the whole story there is full of errors. Muhammad is a person he do not know really what he's talking about. And uh, uh, I think you said to me, you, you said to me, chapter 12, right? Didn't you say chapter 12? As I remember from your text, 12, 30 something, 36. Hmm. <clears throat> or as Muhammad is a person he copy uh, from other books and he add his own sp spices and when he do that you know this is where the problem start I was yawning, by the way, and Allah, he hate those who yawn. Why you don't play commercial break? Uh, no. Actually, uh, uh, you mad, he made a commercial break with the black seed. You can see it in his video, in his channel. It's very funny. Hey, fake uh, prince, answer my question. Hey, Daniel, I answer your question. Your prophet, he was having sex with his wife. When she have her menstruation, where you been, man? Did you know that we can't do anything with you, our wives during her menses? Except having, except of course. We can do what? We can't do anything with our wives during her menses except having intercourse? Okay. Let us see. Daniel, so you went to Google and you spent 10 hours and you came back and you come with this answer. Well, let everybody laugh at you. Here we go. It says, keep away from women. It doesn't say don't do have intercourse. Stay away totally from them. And don't approach them until they are clean. So Daniel, again, you are a donkey. Guys, does it say stay away and don't approach them? Don't get close to them. Stay away. Keep away. So you are a certified idiot again. So this is your text. And now he will go for 10 hours. He will come back to find to, to try to find to, re, to retain his honor, which is shattered everywhere. Great Prince, don't you know that we can't do anything with our wives? No. The Quran says, stay away from your wives. The Quran never says, don't do intercourse. It says, stay away from your wife and don't even keep close. So again, you are a certified idiot. The verse in front of you. Don't try, Daniel. Don't you know that I'm a Christian prince? I mean, if I'm you, I will not even try. You are just embarrassing yourself. Each time you come back, you know, you, you sound like a rabbit. He, you know, like uh, uh, I spank him, then he go down in the hole, and then he like put his head down, like, okay, and he go and like find some carrot and come back and throw the carrot at me. Why Google say I have 11? Well, the Muslim, they say that he have a living at the same time, which means there's women who pass away at the moment he have, at one moment he have a living, but the total they are 13. However, those numbers, I believe they are all, they are wrong. I believe Muhammad, he have uh, way more of women and not to mention the sex slaves, you know, 
the sleeves he owned. Uh, don't, don't blame him because the Muslim they try to justify what Muhammad do you know because how the Quran says stay away from them they will have to come and say no we can the Prophet he did you know they take the Prophet against the Quran the Prophet is more powerful than the Quran Uh, yeah, for sure he do not know what Daniel mean. No, actually, not a single name in the Quran from those who they are coming from the Jewish or Aramaic. The Muslim they knew what they mean. If you ask a Muslim what Gabriel mean, they don't know. Israel mean, they don't know. Ishmael, Abraham, Isa, they don't know. They have no idea. Isaac, they don't know. They have no idea, all names, because this is a theft. Where you can find my books? If you want my books in English, you can find them in Amazon. If you are a person who speak other languages, we give them for free, like Indonesian, Russian, Chinese, etc. You know, the good thing about having my books, not only your knowledge will be increased, actually, if you are able, if you are a person who have a very good memory, and at the same time, let's say you have a, skills of debate, those books can make you the most powerful debater ever uh, when it's come uh, to be about Islam. You know, when I made my first two books, I wanted them to be an enough weapon to wipe the floor with Muhammad so I put like what is enough to fill a library of books into books yeah you can all of you are welcome to download my videos any of them any of any I have thousands of videos they are made for you my friend they are not for me those are not for me those are for you all my videos is just to serve you I'm here to teach you and I, uh, I hope not only you will take my videos you will learn from them and then you teach your people right You see, uh, I have people who have my videos, like the same video now I'm doing. In other channel, he will have like 80,000 in maybe two days. I will have, for some reason, 30. I don't get upset. That's wonderful. So for me, I don't really... Uh, you might even have my videos and you have more subscribers from me. That's, that's wonderful. I, I'm not here to be about me I don't care really I mean for me I am just serving and as long as we can spread the truth that's why I keep asking people please download my videos and put them in your channel actually the funny is that people who download my videos YouTube allow them to monetize and even receive donation I cannot imagine it's my video I cannot monetize it here they can <laughs> yeah because they fight me bad you know they hate me so they they target my my channel and they don't want me to have any let us say any benefit they, they thought if they stop me from being able to have monetization or ordination that this guy will stop coming to youtube and actually it worked there's many uh, you know the second you take away from them this uh, uh, every to take a donation and YouTube, etc. They stop coming, they stop making videos because they were motivated by money, you know. But this is not the case for me, I don't care, you know. Uh, I, always I was doing it for free, but nothing will change. Yeah. The Lord is our provider. <clears throat> but this is what they thought they thought 
if we stop him from being able to receive a donation the guy will not go online every day and actually what's happened is the opposite I'm here many hours every day almost I mean the last 24 hours I think we stayed online if I say 13 14 hours I'm not exaggerating in just within I mean within two days but one, 24 hours Um, well, to translate my book, you do not need a tutorial. I mean, just uh, translate, you know, bring the book and do it in your language. It's very easy. Just do the same. Same chapter, same names, same titles, you know. You can do that with the Turkish language. Uh, Does Muhammad have six slaves or when he was Khadija arrived? No, I believe the coward Muhammad, when Khadija was alive, he did not dare to do any to play with his penis around because she is the rich woman and she is in control. You know, he was her puppy. But uh, the second Khadija she is gone, Muhammad now is free and he got the money. Uh, the prophet he said uh, that uh, said Constantine Istanbul will be conquered how that is not a prophecy thank you for saying that I will show you that this is not a prophecy it was the opposite because the one who will conquer it it was the Arab not the Turkish your prophet was speaking to the Arab in front of him and your prophet he said stay away from the Turkish as long they stay away from you Muhammad he never thought that the Turkish will become Muslims actually your prophet he believed that the Turkish are people of Gog and Magog Let us see. So it was a big failure for Muhammad. He said he will conquer Constantinia. He was just making encouragement. The same what happened in the Fal. He said to them, 100 can fight 1,000. They went to war, they lost. Uh, and Muhammad, he claimed that the Muslims they will fight the Turks in the Judgment Day. So again, your prophet, he failed. Here we go. So when Muhammad, he made the claim that you are going to conquer Constantinia, he was speaking to the Arab in front of him and not a single Turkish was between them. Are you there? And not only that, actually, your prophet he made fun of the Turkish, and he is, uh, he made uh, fun of their look, and he claimed that the Turkish are from Gog and Magog. And let me find the hadith. Uh, you know, obviously, Mohammedans are people who do not know their cult. They are midget. They are midget. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, value number 11, page number 85. And your prophet saying that the people of Gog and Magog are the Turkish, and he described them as Asian people with funny faces. Excuse my language. Uh, here we go. It says here that Zulkarnain he saw uh, the people of Gog and Magog, and each one of them he was half man. The the the, the height of each one of them, sorry, is the height of height man, uh, half man, and he is uh, fat, and they have uh, not nails like you know what they call the nails for the animals, machalib. I don't know what the word in our in English. 
and they have teeth like lions and they have mouth uh, 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 like uh, uh, you know what let me use Google translation man <laughs> that will be easier <laughs> sorry <laughs> But this is how we at your prophet and how we at your religion. The Turkish people, they are people of Gog and Magog. So look at the description here. Yeah, this is better. Here we go. This is Al Khurtubi. Very number 11. Page number 85. Not me. And don't tell me I'm lying. So Azul Qurnayn, he saw them. And then here we say, look. He said the Turk is a group of Gog and Magog. Do you see it? <laughs> Don't try Christian friends. I will smash you. Literally. The Turkish are Gog and Magog. Hmm. Yeah. And remember, the Turkish will be the enemy as long as they are the Gog and Magog. They are the one who will attack even Mecca. They are the one who will conquer more of Islamic land and they are the enemy of Allah. So how you said that the Prophet, he prophesy that you are going to conquer Constantinia? Obviously, he wasn't speaking about you. He was speaking about the Arab. Because according to him, the Turkish are the Gog and Magog. Are you still there? And let me see if I can give you the link. This one, the link have the title have Arabic. So I need to shorten it. Okay. Who won the link, guys? Do you see how easy to conquer their stupidity? Knowledge, my friend. Knowledge, not ignorance. When the knowledge comes, the stupidity, stupidity is defeated. Let me pause for you. Now, this website is owned by the Shia, but this is Al Qurtabi, which is a Sunni book. So the Sunni cannot say, oh, this is a Shia website. It's just we search for the book, and it is in the Shia library. So this is not really important where it is. But as you see, we have the value number, we have the you know the page number, and you can go and use the same. Use Google Translation and you will find exactly what we are saying. Erdogan is Gog and Magog, my friend. Your, your Erdogan is Gog and Magog. All right. Who's next? Who's next? You know, they, they try to... Uh, uh, let us say, oh, you can post the link with Arabic in it. Uh, I, I thought because before I tried, it doesn't work. YouTube did not accept. Look like it's worked now. All right. That's good. Yeah, I know, Abdullah, your prophet was the greatest on earth. And even when he spoke in the street, the rocks they said to him, Assalamu alaikum, which is a clear sign of stupidity and, and mental illness. This is a clear sign of stupidity. When a man he walked in the street and he hear rocks saying to him, Assalamu alaikum, Prophet. And remember, nobody hear it except him. Let me find you the hadith. Uh, and actually there's a specific uh, 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 rock not all rocks that speak to Muhammad only one just one rock 
because I think this is the only rock speak Arabic. Do you see it, Abdul? Obviously, your prophet is mentally ill. Don't use bad language, otherwise the, the admin will block your, will remove your, uh, your text, please. Abshir saying, I am a Muslim. Some would call it moderate. I know what is moderate. There's not such a thing. Either you are a Muslim, believe in everything, or you don't. What is moderate? Like, did you install new chips? Did you update your Quran? Do you have a new Quran? Yeah. So, as you see here, I recognize a stone in Mecca which used to pay me solution. Is it a clear sign of stupidity? Only one rock in Mecca used to say Assalamu Alaikum Prophet and the Prophet say back Assalamu Alaikum. Hmm. Doesn't matter if you are born in Europe or not. Islam has nothing to do with where you are born. Islam is Islam. Either take it or leave it. Islam is to follow what Muhammad taught. And if you say I'm moderate, it's mean you don't want to be a Muslim actually. You're just trying to fool yourself saying I am I'm still a Muslim, but I don't want to follow everything, you know. But reality you are not. Hmm? Do you believe the original Kaaba located in Petra? Well, you know, that will not make any difference for me really. I mean, who care? It's in Betra or it is in the moon. Okay. You see, uh, focus in the head of the snake, not in theories. If I am a historian, maybe that will make a difference for me. Uh, I have to be somebody who study, like I say, a certain kind of science, right? To check it out and see if it's true or not. But for me, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to, to prove their, their stupidity and their stupid profit. And it's better for me not to go to theories because theories will not change a faith of a person because maybe you can prove it right uh, but if you prove that the Kaaba is a pagan thing so it the Kaaba is the Kaaba it's a pagan thing prove it when when somebody says the black stone erase your sin this is pagan you know pagan teaching so focus in what help to save the Muslims from the cult however if there is a scientist and he is making his own study we encourage that right we aren't against it but for me my part is different from his part i hope you understand what i'm saying i believe everybody in this life have his own duty right so a person he study certain things he focus on that my focus is different. My videos are too long. You can cut to pieces. Like now, I just made a video. I made a, uh, made a, a, a few moments talking about Muhammad saluting the stones. Cut it. Make it a video by itself. You don't have to translate the whole video. Right? Not only Arab are racist, Muhammad is racist. Muhammad, he says, the most person Allah he hates is a black man. So you are a black man. Muhammad, he says, that Allah created white people from the right shoulder of Adam, and he said to them, go to heaven, I don't care. And he said, I created the black people from the left shoulder of Adam, and I said to them, go to hell, and I don't care. And this is in the book of Tirmidhi. This is Muhammad himself. Even the Muslim, they say that Muhammad said that the black stone was white like milk and the sin of mankind made it black. So what sin make you? Black. So according to them, sin is the reason for you to be black. 
And not to forget to mention the Quran is full of those things. The day Allah will make faces white and faces blackened. Who is the one who will be black? Those who don't believe in Allah. So being black is a punishment according to the Quran. You see it? All of this is racism. And the Muslim, they start adding things between bracket just to make it look nicer. But the Arabic says that they, Allah, will make faces black and faces white. Okay. Hey, Abdullah, don't post those things. This is the last warning. If you post those stupid things, I will block you. Either you give me something smart or I will, I will send you free shipping and head into Allah. All right, Abdullah. If you open the chapter 27, uh, verse number 82, where Allah will send a beast, it's called uh, uh, Jassasa. You know, Jassasa appeared many places in the stupid religion. And this beast is going to uh, have the ring of Solomon and the, uh, the staff of Moses. And it's going to make the whole world white and black. So all those who they are white, those are the Muslims. And all those who don't believe in Allah, Allah will punish them and make them black. This is that's what Islam says. If you don't believe me, you can open the interpretation for the verse. Go to Ibn Kathir's example. The women which uh, 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 the companion of Muhammad he killed, which is supposedly uh, one of the daughters of Allah, she was what? She was black, all right? Remember? Search for the expedition of Khadim al Walid. The expedition of Khadim al Walid. He killed the daughter of Allah. She was a dark skinned woman. The one who will destroy the Kaaba is the Shaitan. He is what? He's black. And you know, just to show you the stupidity of the social media. So once I was arguing with Muslims in Facebook, so I said to him, uh, how you know that he is, uh, he is, say, uh, he, sorry, uh, he is in, uh, uh, he is Satan. So he said, the uh, Muslim said, have you ever heard of an angel? He is black. Imagine or not, I answered him saying, so are you saying that whoever is black is evil? Uh, you, uh, Facebook, they deleted my comment and they sent me a warning and the Muslim comment is still there. And he is the one saying, have you ever seen an angel or uh, not only an angel, he said an angel or a good person uh, uh, or uh, someone sent by God, he is not, uh, he's, he's black. And Facebook, they banned me, not the Muslims. And this is why we see the Muslims always, they, they ask the atheists to help them. Atheists are the biggest help for the cut of Islam, liberals. They protect Islam, they defend Islam, they lie about Islam. They are, they are in bed with Islam. But you know, we know that there's no different. Yes, there is bad people between everywhere. Uh, maybe in some other, like because of uh, people, they have no education from some certain ethic, ethnic group, but not because they are white or black, but because they have a problem in the society, drugs, uh, uh, no education, no jobs, etc. So crimes will be high. But there is wonderful people that are black and there is bad people. There's good people everywhere. There's wonderful people that are white and there's bad people. Same for Asian, everywhere. Uh, you go any country in the world, there's rapists. There's people who arrest the rapists from the same ethnic, correct? There's people who they are thieves and there's people who arrest the thieves from the same ethnic. So uh, it's not an ethnic thing. It is about individuals. And if you live in a poor country, usually uh, always 
poor society bring a lot of problems poor you know uh, unless you live in a village small village where people they can just grow some chickens and life will be easier but living in an extreme poor situation will lead you into crimes ah Harun guys Harun the word black does not mean black it's a metaphor but this is about making their faces black literally Harun let me show you Abdul potato guys look what Harun is Harun trying to fix it you know Muslims they are smart genius this is a metaphor it's a metaphor okay let's see if it's a metaphor or not so we go to Ibn Kathir in front of your eyes Mr. Metaphor how is Metaphor doing by the way don't forget to say hello to him okay this is Mr. Metaphor and this is a chapter 27 are you ready for the metaphor? I will give you a lot of metaphor. How many kilos you want? Okay, whatever you want. We are here to provide you with the metaphor. Okay, okay. Mr. Metaphor, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir, chapter 27, verse number 82. You said this is a metaphor. Okay. Let us see the metaphor. Are you ready? I hope so. Okay. What are you doing, my brother? Okay. This is the beast who will come from the ground, brother. He, his head is the like head of a bull, his eyes like the ears of a pig, his ears like the ears of an elephant, his horn like the horn of a stag, his neck is neck like a uh, like a neck of an ostrich, his chest like a chest of a lion, his color like the color of a tiger. I mean, stupid. Okay, and then, and then, uh, he will come back. He will. It will bring with it the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. Alhamdulillah, black magic. You know, magic the Solomon. And it will be no believer lit without making white spot in his face. Are you there, Mr. Metaphor? Harun, how is the metaphor going with you? Are you there? I hope that the metaphor is really doing good now. I mean, come on, it's a metaphor. So it will make a white sp spot in his face is going to hit him with the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon, depending on the situation. And then it says here, which will spread until it's his face shining white as a result. Wait, Mr. Metaphor, are you there? Harun? Harun, ya Harun. Do you know what Harun means, by the way? You are a big cat, that's all. You are just a cat. I'm sure you do not know even what Harun mean. Cat, meow. So, spread until his face we came shine. Those are the Muslims, okay? And then it says here, and then there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face. And it will be spread until his face turned to be black as a result. Are you there, Mr. Metaphor? I like metaphor. Mm. Metaphor is the best, forget about the rest. Don't text me in Skype unless you are a Muslim and debate me, otherwise I will block you. Don't be any, don't be silly. Are you there, Harun, the cat? Should I continue? Because it's getting more funny, by the way. Hmm. It's a metaphor, brother. It's a metaphor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here it says, the beast will emerge from the earth with the staff of Moses and uh, the ring of Solomon and then it will strike the nose of the disbelievers. It's a metaphor. The, the nose here, by the way, present penis. 
I think, I think so. It's a metaphor for penis. And then after it hit the nose of the disbeliever with the staff of Moses, it will make it disbeliever, uh, you know, a face uh, into a black brother. Hmm. I mean, you Muslims are silly. Silly as what silly mean? Right? I would be a great rapper. Yeah, but to, to be a great uh, person doing rap, uh, what they call it rapper, you have to speak very good English, right? So I have a very short, let us say I have little, you know, what the word, I don't know what to say, like in English, in order to make, I can make poetry in Arabic, real poetry, not rap. Rap is so easy, yeah. But this is very stupid religion, must a metaphor. Are you there, Haroon? Haroon. Ha, 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 hachu, Haroon. Did I did Hachu? Ah, Haroon. Allah, he loved those who sneeze. Alhamdulillah. I mean, look at this genius God. This God, he loved those who sneeze. Is that metaphor, by the way? Haroon? When Allah, he loved those who sneeze. Is that metaphor or it's really sneezing? I heard that sneezing here is a metaphor to uh, Sleepy Joe. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know. I heard rumors. What do you think? And I heard that if you do yawning, shaitan jump inside your mouth and he laugh from inside your mouth. I heard that this is metaphor for Pepsi Cola. I'm not sure, by the way, if he meant Pepsi Cola or not, but it might be, I mean, something inside your mouth, what is going to be? I better think about something not bad. Hmm. I mean, it's true, Shaitan, he, Allah, he loved those who sneeze. Thank you, Allah, for saying that. We sneeze a lot. Achoo, achoo, you know, you know, actually, you know, uh, flu. You can imagine that Allah, he loved winter. Because in winter, a lot of people, they sneeze. Allah is so happy. It's like a happy season, you know. Uh... Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Well, I think it's enough for us today. And I will go do some uh, sneezing just to make Allah happy. I don't want to make Allah upset from me. I mean, that's, come on, we have to prevent Allah from doing harm to us. He's like a scary person, you know? So just do some sneezing, you know? And he was like, okay, I love those who sneeze. So Allah like is going to, you know, to punish me. I will do like, hachu, 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 hachu. And Allah start like, ha, 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 I love you. <laughs> and do I hachu? And he say, I love you. Like Allah, listen, listen, hachu, Allah, I love you. So you sneeze, this God, he loved those who sneeze. You know? So we can say like, okay, Allah, for your sake, we are going to make some dance like a break we will sneeze for you we will make you barbecue and after we sneeze we do yawning say hello and then everybody go home and allah is so excited he did not understand a word from what i said he did not understand what barbecue mean because allah speak arabic anyway so he will say i heard him saying sneeze and this is what i care for Unblock my account, Abby Frenzy. Why you are being a frenzy? Huh. I mean, you are being a frenzy and you want me to block and block you. Okay. Do you think Allah, he likes such a name? Frenzy? That's fishy name, to be honest with you. I mean, come on. You are being a frenzy around. Stop being a frenzy. Uh, 
Yeah, me and my uh, sneeze. Yeah, I think my sneezing can help a lot, by the way. Yeah. Um, what happened to Harun and his friends? What happened to the Muslims? They are gone. Uh, that Jesus says about his death and resurrection. Yeah, Jesus, he says, Salamun alayya, yawma amutu, yawma walitu, yawma amutu, yawma uba'atu hiya. Peace be upon me, the day I am born, the day I die, and the day I will be resurrected. So, yes. Anyway, look like the Muhammadan are not here no more. And it's getting too late for me. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. And uh, you are hum humorous? Is that English word? Humor? Do you mean uh, humus or humorous? Humorous, humorous. Uh, don't say that word to an Arab guy who don't speak good English. You are humorous. I was saying to myself, man, this guy is insulting me, saying he's humus. I like humus, by the way. I mean, it's good. I mean, humus is better than sneezing and Muhammad and garbage. At least it's tasty. You know, hummus, hummus. And by the way, there's no hummus in heaven of Allah. Isn't it weird? Do you know that in the heaven of Allah, there's only uh, uh, meat of birds? What a boring buffet. You spend your life eating chicken. What the heck? Hmm? Does the Quran chapter 3 verse number 18 says the angels are gods? <clears throat> um, let us go to 318 and give you a better understanding. See, because the Quran is stupid and the Arabic is very weird. So when you read it, it's going to say that Allah, Allah, he bear witness, that there is no God, but Allah and the angels and those who have knowledge. Uh, yeah. Stupid book. You see, the Muslim, they will say to you, here Allah, he delay the names to be behind him, but he don't mean that they are the angels because it says there's no God but him. Yeah, it says that really, but it says, and the angels and those who have knowledge. So when you have and, you made them gods too. So you are right about the understanding. Yes, Abshir, what you want? You see in Arabic when you say I, uh, me and uh, you, this is and here appear as wa. Actually here in translation is showing it. Allah and his angels and those endued with knowledge. Here it says standing with knowledge. But that will not work. Why? Here it says, "Qa'iman bil qist." Qa'iman is for one individual, not for all. Not all. Not all for many. I'm yawning. You believe it for real? <laughs> This is not me laughing, by the way. This is Satan. He jumped inside my mouth. As the prophet, he said, <laughs> I'm really yawning. I'm getting sleepy. I did not sleep good. You know, I'm, I'm staying late every day. I will, I will try to go back and go in life on daytime so we can get more people to join us too. But, you know, for me, I'm trying to change to go live in different timings so we can get more people to be with us because usually we go in the morning my time. And that will make it maybe limited for people in certain time to be with us. Uh, why Allah uh, promised the Muslim green silk? Uh, very simple, because when you live in the desert, when you live in the desert, green is uh, is is the is a beauty. 
You know what I mean? If you ask somebody, uh, he said to you, I went to uh, Dubai and I love the desert there. Why? Because he never saw a desert. So he find it amazing. But a person or another person, he will feel disgusted from the desert. So if you ask me, I want to take your desert, I said, no way, you go. You know what I mean? So for a person who grow in the desert, a green is life. Because it is grass, it is shade, it is food, it is wealth, you know. So this is why everybody in the heaven of Allah will be wearing green. But in the same time, that <coughs> that is very stupid. Why? Because imagine you will be wearing one color for the rest of your life. Or, uh, sorry, eternity. And what make it more funny, this green is made, green dress is made in Iran, Persian. You saw me, you debate with Muhammad Hijab. Okay, well, he destroyed me, as you say. Well, whatever, you know better. But as I know, we did not debate. The guy who was asking me a question hanging up on me. <laughs> he said, Did you see the sumon? You say, Suck on me. <laughs> I said, Yes, I was caught in your prophet. I was caught in your stupid prophet. I said, <laughs> You see how he destroyed me? <laughs> And then he play a video of a woman and the fact this woman she is the one she was saying bad things about Jesus so your, your, your friend is a perverted man and then after that he go around and he asked Muslim Sheikh to suck his wife tits this is your friend <laughs> you don't dare to debate me none of you dare to debate me discovered he was so much intimidated to the point he prepared himself to play an audio hang up play an audio hang up he never debate me and he will never do never ever they are terrified very much intimidated did you ask yourself why all of them they are willing to debate everybody suddenly when it's come to me no not with me they fear the fear is so strong the tit boy uh, you know muhammad he says a lot of things muhammad was like a crazy mentally ill person who cannot shut up and the more he talked the more he make poo poo and we have to admit i'm really grateful for the stupidity of muhammad like now okay can i suck your wife tits who where this coming from where this is about this is Muhammad saying a woman, she can give herself to an adult man to suckle her. So we as a Christians, I'm really grateful that the Muslims, they wrote all the stupid, crazy stuff Muhammad, he said. This guy is a certified donkey. He cannot keep his mouth shut. Even Aisha, she was ordering her nieces and her sisters to breastfeed anyone when to enter upon her from men and they have to do it 10 times. So we really uh, appreciate the Muslims recording this for us so we can defeat Islam today. So we have to admit the stupid Mohammedans preserve the words of the stupid prophet so the smart Christian will see them today see how amazing it is and then the stupid Mohammedan they translate the stupid Muhammad and then the stupid Mohammedan they publish the stupid Muhammad words in website and then the smart Christian he opened the stupid Mohammedan website and he read it for them and then the stupid Muhammadan, they deny what the stupid Muhammad said. And they say, this is Da'if. Then the smart Christian says, well, this is Al-Bukhari. Then the stupid Muhammadan, he go more in denial. He say, Al-Bukhari is Da'if too. <laughs> so you have, you have to be really grateful for the stupidity of the followers of this religion and let me show you even muhammad he said to them whoever write hadith erase it just to show you how stupid this cult is the followers are really out of their mind 
Muhammad said, the, the big donkey, don't take down anything from me. And he who took down anything from me except the Quran, he should efface it. Can you believe the stupidity? The guy, he just told them, don't write the hadith. They said the prophet, they wrote down, the prophet said, don't write the hadith. Donkeys. The guy, he just told you, don't write the hadith. He just said, don't write down the hadith. Uh, Alex, I don't know, I never saw one of them. However, you can search my videos and you will find thousands of Muslims leave Islam, you know. I don't see anyone leaving Islam after talking to Muhammad Hijab. Do you have one? I don't know, I have thousands. Watch my videos. God, don't kill like your prophet. So, there's a stupid prophet, he just said to them, don't write the hadith. It's like saying to somebody, don't write in the wall. They go and he write in the wall. The prophet said, don't write in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupidity is amazing <laughs> and imagine after he told them don't write the hadith they keep writing <laughs> like you, you're a stupid donkey he just told you don't write it efface it efface it he knew he knew he's a stupid he knew that people are laughing at him at that time still he don't want it to be remembered he want to forget about it and you idiot, you write it down. And now they wish that they never wrote a word. They wish. Wish, wish. Keep wish, wishing. Wish, wish. Wash, wish, wash, 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 Imagine those people, the, the prophet, he fought, they write, the prophet, he fought three farts, and then he cough. <coughs> what the heck? Imagine in their book, it says that when the prophet, he do poo poo, the earth opened her mouth and swallow his poo poo. Like what? The earth opened her mouth and swallowed the poop. And then they write, the prophet, his pee smell like musk. Like what? see I better go and do poo poo and see if I can convince the earth to swallow it I will not use it where the bathroom you know just let us see I mean give it a try maybe the miracle will happen I'm an Arab at the end of the day and the Muslim they say I am illiterate so I mean I have many uh, things well if I me to be a prophet you have to be in you know illiterate and then Arab and then uh, you have to be dumb I will play dumb for some time and in the top of that, uh, you have to be filthy. I did not take a shower for a year, okay? Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, there's many, I'm close to be there. I will keep trying, I will keep trying. And and this is the sign to know that you are a prophet. If you do poo poo and the earth is swallow your poo poo, that's mean you became a prophet, okay? You do not need any proof. Just, you know, and that's it, you are there, okay? Uh, can you please tell me the name of the Islamic movie about Muslim fighting over the poopoo of camel? Yeah, I can. There's no need for the name. Let me find you the video. Hold on. Uh. <clears throat> Imagine they are fighting over the poop of Aisha. Um, but let me see. Yeah, here we go. The, the, the movie is long, really, by the way. 
but uh, the part here we go this is the part okay let me we can play it actually here and remember this video on this movie is made by Muslims this is not made by Christians or Jews or Hindus you know I will, I will give you the link Those are the Muslims at that time, supposedly. ماذا تريدون من البصرة؟ أنا أشتري كل شيء. Let us see when they go to the Campbell thing. Hold on, let's move them from the video. Here we go. This is Aisha. Supposedly she is on the camel. This is this is the camel of Aisha. This camel he carry on his back only Muslims. He don't go to war except for jihad. This camel. This is the camel of Aisha. He don't scream except to worship Allah. Yeah, and he is even the hair of him is blessing. His breath is uh, is uh, is healing. This is all the all the camel. Yeah. yeah, he's warning them to respect the camel, otherwise he will be punished. The one who take a, a, a hair or from, uh, I don't know what he say next, uh, he will be blessed. <laughs> Here we go, the, the, the camel, he the, he dropped Pupu, and now the Muslims are fighting over the Pupu of the camel of Aisha. Let us go back a little bit. You see, they are holding his tail from the back because he will do Pupu soon. <laughs> And now this guy, this Muslim, he got some poo-poo in his hand. He will sniff it and he will say, Allah, how great it is. <laughs> he is saying to him, what are you doing with the poo-poo of the, of the camel? <laughs> Smell it. <sighs> It is more tasty than musk. More, way more. <sighs> so anyway, this is the link. Let me pause for you. And you can save it. Remember, this is a video made by Muslims. You see, don't see Muslims going by millions to strike. This is made by them. So this is according to their books. So they cannot deny it. They cannot say it's not true. All right. No, 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 this is what they, this is what they believe, this is what they did. Uh, they used to fight over the shit of the, excuse my language, over the shit of the camel of uh, Aisha, and they believe it was a blessing. This is, if, if this is what they do to the shit of the camel of Aisha, what they do with the shit with Muhammad? <laughs> this is the shit of the camel, not the... <laughs> and even this is not the camel of Muhammad, this is the camel of the women who Muhammad used to sleep with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah horizon how are you my friend yeah welcome uh anyway I, I i leave you with this comedy and you can watch it and enjoy yourself see nice dreams i will go now sleep you know i will try to sleep and i will imagine myself like i'm in the desert and suddenly the aisha camel walk by and he drops some bombs around me Ah, oh, smell unbelievable. Wow, so wonderful. Heaven, it's heaven. It's like more than musk. I mean, imagine if we can get like one ounce of this shit. I mean, not even one ounce. I mean, just little, little. How much blessing will be in your life? I mean, face it. Did you see the guy when he said, uh, hey, hold on, hold on. Let's go, go back. Look here. It's more 
tasty than misc <sighs> brother it's really beautiful and it's very touchy and with the shit of Muhammad, we leave you in peace. <laughs> Sorry to say, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> what a shitty cult. <laughs> Take care, people. I'm not going to say the name of the Lord after this. I wish you a great time. Have a great weekend. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him.